Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Shikha Bajaj, and I'm an artist here in Plano. Um, I've been living here for over 10 years, and I've worked with Plano artists, and I've worked, uh, you know, I've worked for the Plano Library for a very long time. We've exhibited here, and uh, I'm so happy that everybody's here to join us today on this very rainy Tuesday afternoon. So what we're doing today is we're going to take a traditional Tanjore painting, which is, um, uh, it's a, it's something that was, it's, I think, 400 years old, and it's still prevalent today, and people still work with it. But what we are doing is taking that really complicated, tedious thing and making it our own. So what we, I have here is uh, two samples, um, same motive, more or less, but a, a larger one, which is, you know, on uh, like an A4 sheet where you could you could make something and maybe put it in a frame or, or uh, hang it up. And this is a greeting card, essentially. So uh, much smaller. And today I'll demonstrate the greeting card. Um, we'll just get started straight away because it's a longer process. And, uh, you know, I want to show you as much as I possibly can. So the first off is we start with a template. Now what I have is, let's put this in this. It, it's a tracing. Uh, the way to transfer this is by using carbon paper. And uh, you can buy this from Amazon. I think you get a hundred sheets for about five, six dollars. And they're great to have around the house because you can really make uh, you know, all kinds of crafts with it. This is regular cardstock. Uh, I'm going to place the carbon paper on it. I'd like to align it so it doesn't, you know, we don't have crooked tracing. Um, there we go. And then put my, what I have, uh, just position it and clip it on. And we can start tracing. You have to, you can use a pencil or a pen or anything that's sharp and make sure you press down because what we're really doing is making an impression of this elephant on this cardstock. Uh, remember the, the, you know, the black side goes down. Uh, start tracing. Again, pressing fairly hard and as accurately as you can. You can even print it out. I know we did send some templates out on the, along with the Zoom link. So if you have it printed, great. Why I like to um, trace is because very often young kids, um, you know, want to make their own. And uh, if you have, say, two or three things that you like, but you can't really get the perfect prints, so you can make your own drawings by tracing different things or different symbols and make, you know, make it your own. It doesn't really just have to be a printout that you got off the internet. This is where we use a little bit of our own creativity and make the, the drawing our own. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like down there. Whatever I've traced out is gonna show up. The elephant is, is a very uh, interesting uh, motif here. It's used really often, in, especially in Asian cultures, because uh, it was, I guess they used to ride on it. It was uh, in processions, it would be decorated. And that's what we're doing here. It's, this is really just, uh, you know, what they would do is they decorate the uh, elephants with jewels and stuff and have a, a, like a big blanket over its back which would have all kinds of embroideries in it, on it. So that is, uh, you know, it would be very, very pretty. There we go. All right, so when you take it off, I actually have one, which is done. So that's what it's gonna look like. 
I have one that's already done for us. And this is what I'm going to start painting. Once this is done, you can even darken it out. If you, you know, you can't see very well. You can darken it out by like a Sharpie or something. But this is what I have here and I'm going to start painting it. Uh, the one that I am, um, the paints I'm using here are the white and the neutral gray. Uh, let's start by taking out, this is a, a palette paper, which you, know, you could use a, like a disposable plate for, uh, to mix your paints or, uh, or a palette. I don't like using plastic palettes because you have to clean them and that's just too much work. So this works great because you can uh, mix your paints on it and then just throw it away and get another piece of paper next time. It's just so much easier than having to clean stuff later. Okay. The paints I'm using are the Liquitex Basics. They're great for kids. Uh, they're not too expensive. If you want to buy the more professional stuff, you, know, you can use these ones, which are the heavier body paints. But this is really, you know, it's good for children and for playing around with stuff. All right, so we start by mixing. I have my cup of water. I have all kinds of fine brushes. I'm to make sure you see what's going on. There. All right, mixing paint. Um, we always start with the lighter color and add the dark to the lighter color. So the reason we do that is because that way we can control how dark we want to make it. Now if I put the white on the gray, uh, what's going to happen is if it gets too dark, I'm going to use like copious amounts of white to get it to lighten again. Uh, so this is obviously too light. So I'm going to just add a little bit more. And you can keep going till you get the perfect gray or you know whatever it is that uh, you're looking for for that particular thing. You will use all of it. I also do not like to um, mix my paints with my brushes because I think it you know, it'll go right deep into that thing over there. And then it, again, hard to clean, reduces the life of your brushes. So palette knife is great for mixing. All right, so this is what I have. I'm gonna see if it's fairly close. And I think it is. So let's, maybe you, we could go darker, but well, this is a slightly lighter gray elephant and that's all right. Okay, let's start painting. Now, for younger kids, you do not have to paint. We can, you can use um, color pencils. You can use, you know, just uh, felt pens, markers. Uh, you can use watercolors. Watercolors are also, uh, you know, slightly easier to use. Acrylics are a tad harder. And if they get on your clothes, they stay on your clothes. They're not going away. So definitely for very young kids, you know, I would recommend um, using something like watercolor or just uh, any water-based paint or color pencils. The, um, the horse I have back there, that's actually done with color pencils in it. You get a really nice you know, effect with that as well. Okay, so we're gonna start making the painting the elephant. I am not gonna use too much water in this. Uh, first off, because it is paper and uh, you don't want the paper to buckle. And secondly, the this Liquitex Basics paint has uh, some medium mixed in. So you really don't need to add water. If you use the heavy body Liquitex, then you do need to add water or actually better than that, you add medium. Okay. So 
So we'll start. Um, we're going to start with the trunk. And I'm going to make it, um, you know, light gray. And then I'm going to actually take the darker gray and add some accents on it. But for now, let's just get a nice uh, layer. So let's put this here so you kind of know where I'm going. I'm gonna leave the tusk white. I'm gonna leave their, uh, you know, the nails white, and all these bits where it's gonna be gold and red. Obviously, I'm gonna be blank. Again, you can uh, simplify this. If you don't want to have that much detail, you could take some of this the gold stuff off. If you want to, you know, it's your painting and you can make it your own. So if you want to make a pink elephant, that's fine too. The whole point is to really have fun with this. And that's where the, you know, initially I was talking about the uh, getting the basic drawing, make the drawing your own as well. You can get the template, but have fun with it and you know, be creative with it. And that's where it gets really interesting. Okay. So the larger areas I'm gonna do with this brush. And then when I go in for the finer areas, I'm going to use a, a thinner brush, just so we have, you know, have more control then with the paint. These brushes are um, silver line brushes. They're really just one of the nicest brushes that are out there. A little bit on the expensive side, but you know, if you are a serious painter, they're nice to have. And you can, you know, I just buy like one every time we go to the art store. And then over years, I have the entire collection. And they last a really long time. So we're almost there. So if you see over here, um, and I don't know how well you can see, I can get it closer to the camera. A little bit patchier on the head of the elephant. That's because there was still water on my brush when I started, but I'm gonna wait for it to dry and then maybe do a second coat. It's best to wait between coats for the paint to dry. Because otherwise, uh, you know, you just end up pushing the paint around and it won't really stick to the paper. And that's not you know, very desirable. Okay. So the traditional um, Tanjore painting comes from the city in Tanjore in Southern India. And um, it's, like I said, it's been, I think over 400 years old. And the way they do it is, you know, it's not on paper, obviously. It's, the, it's done on wooden panels. And then they would put a layer of chalk and gum on it to kind of raise it and stick semi-precious beads something like that, but you know, just um, every, every place there's gold, they would actually, it would be raised um, and they would stick the beads in. And then once that's dry, they would paint it and put 24 karat gold. Of course, we're not using that today, but every place there's gold, there would be 24 karat gold sheets that would be placed. So, you know, definitely a more expensive art form. We can use um, imitation gold. You get it at, uh, I think Amazon has this set of 
hundred sheets for like twenty dollars or something like that. Um, yeah, cheaper than you know twenty four karat gold, obviously, but still not that cheap. A little bit harder to use for kids, so that you know I'm not going to demonstrate it today. So, but that is something that can be done. You basically get a sheet, and then once everything is dry, you just glue it in. It's a little tricky because it's very thin and it gets all over the place, but definitely the effect is you know outstanding. Okay, so we've got this. Uh, um, oh, forgot the year. So Shika, you're doing the greeting card size today. So how large of a project could you do? Um, so I've got, um, if you see behind me, there's the, the big elephant, which is actually done the traditional way with, you know, on a board with the gesso, with gesso or the gum and chalk and the beads and the real gold. And that one's, uh, I'm gonna say it's about like, you know, 12 by 14, but you could go as large as like two feet by three feet. I know the, uh, you know, people have like six feet by 10 feet, but then it's on a massive uh, board of wood, which is like half an inch thick. And it's because all the bead work has to stick and you can't have it buckle. So uh, you could really go large. And if, you know, if, and it takes artists years to finish a project like that. You know, those are like career tanjore artists who will, um, you know, spend a couple of years and do something like that and then put 24 karat gold on it and a lot of beads. So that's just massive projects, but yeah, it can go fairly large. And, you know, hanging it up on the wall would be another project too, because it's so heavy. Okay, so I'm gonna show you one more thing here. I'm gonna start, um, add a slightly darker gray now. This, I'm using a Payne's gray, which is a very bluish gray color. And I'm gonna give the elephant a few accents. This is where I go in for my really tiny brush. And try not to use much water. So over here near the tail, you can add a few shadings. I do like to blend stuff in. You don't wanna make it too stark. What size brush are you using? Um, let's see, this one, let's find out. You know, the thing is there's no standardization for brushes. So this is a zero, zero. The one here is a zero, zero, zero. And this is a, a two. But depending on the brand, you're gonna, the sizes are gonna change. So a size two in this one is this thin and a size two in another one will be like really thick. So unfortunately they, you know, you just have to go by uh, what it looks like. So this, I guess there's some, uh, someone needs to go in and standardize brush sizes. Okay, and so let's add some. Uh, eyeballs and an eye. That's there. Now I'm gonna go in and do the rest of it, but this is wet. So I have one prepared, which I'm gonna start working on next. So, cause I would wanna wait for this to dry before I do anything else. Uh, just because I don't wanna muddle up, uh, you know, whatever I have going so far. All right, so here now we shift gears to the the gold and the red, and of course the white that we've got to do on the tusk and the nails. I'm gonna start with gold because I want it to dry and then I can stick the beads on it. And you know, since it's, um, I'm gonna put a fairly thin layer and it's acrylic paint. Acrylic paint dries very fast. 
which is a good thing here. It's also a good idea to get fresh water um, because we don't want the, you know, the gold to get contaminated by the grays that we have in our water. All right, that's good. So we're doing this greeting card on card stack, cardstock, correct? Yes. And is there other yes. paper that they could use? Um, so cardstock is, you know, something that you can uh, get at um, Michael's or Hobby Lobby or anything like that. But if you did not have that, you could just use any slightly heavier paper. If you, uh, you know, use drawing paper or sketching paper, it might be too thin to hold the paint or uh, to hold the beads. So mixed media or Bristol paper, uh, you know, you get these uh, books of Bristol paper, which is great. You could use poster paper as well, which, you know, it's very often we already have that in the house because uh, students use it for school projects. So you could cut your own little um, paper out and put a fold down the middle. It's, you know, it's just, it's really, um, I think it's about four inches here and it's about five inches here. So about five by eight or make it bigger if you wanna. And then just fold it down the middle and you've got your little card. Does it matter what color the card stock is or would painting work on any color? Um, so you wanna paint on white or off white, but what you could do, and that's a really good question is you could, uh, you know, get some, whatever you have, but then have a little piece of white paper where you paint and then you can go and stick it on this. So you could, uh, but you do want to paint on white or off white paper because you want the colors to show. If you painted it on like a brown or something, you know, you may not get that brilliance of color. So here I'm really putting it nice and thick because I want, um, you know, I want that shine. And this is a very nice, it's called iridescent bright gold. Uh, Liquitex has this. Golden has, a, Golden's a nice brand which has very nice gold paint. They have bronze and silver as well. I think they even have stuff which has actual shimmer in it. So, you know, if that's the more sparkle, the better, then that's, that's your paint. Again, make it your own, have fun with it. Although it's a very traditional art form, we do wanna make, we are already, you know, improvising because this is not what they imagined when they did Tanjore, but then we're having fun with it. And this is somewhat like, what they did. I do want to cover up the uh, lines because you know, pencil lines, especially carbon paper lines, are not the most attractive. So I want to make sure I don't get any of that stuff showing through. There we go. Okay. And this, the gold is where we would put the beads. And I'm gonna do the, the anklets. And so this is what I was talking about when you know I said they really dress up um, the elephants. They would put anklets and uh, you know necklaces and all kinds of jewelry on these elephants. Mm -hmm. 
red and gold were you know, some of the most uh, used colors, especially in this art form. They would have, uh, of course, they were very extremely colorful and they used very vivid colors because the whole point was to, you know, catch your eye. There's nothing subtle here. They would use very simple icons. Uh, they don't do shading or, uh, you know, there's no subtlety here. It was an extremely um, bright kind of composition, fairly simple composition, simple themes, uh, very often religious themes. We go, let's see where else. Okay, I guess here. So that's our gold. Okay, and now we can, we're gonna go and put in some red. So for this, I'm using naphthol crimson, which is a nice bright red color. It'll complement. It's a very orangey red. Um, really does complement uh, um, the gold. See, this event starts to really come together. I always feel that um, paint definitely has more, uh, you know, it just kind of looks nicer than color pencils and stuff. And a lot of artists will disagree with me, but it just has the kind of pop which other mediums don't have. I guess oil pastels has that, you, know, you have that vividness as well. So this is where, you know, if it's a very tiny area and I really do not want to go with the gray. So I'm going to just clean up my brush entirely and take a very, very tiny bit. And then just carefully do that little bit. It's, it takes a little bit of a while to get that kind of control. And that's why, especially for little kids, you know, something like this might be a better idea where it's just bigger and the spaces are bigger. And so, uh, you know, you have less, you need less control in your hand to get this done. And that's really a great, great option for uh, younger kids. The smaller the painting, the harder it gets uh, for younger ones. So I have a very simple pattern here with you know just red and gold. You could, especially if you're doing a bigger area, you could make your own patterns. You could, uh, you know, design it any which way you like. Um, again, I've got just a basic one here, but you could make flowers. You could do anything you like. You know, zentangles are so popular, and that's one thing that can be placed in this area because. Essentially, this is sort of the blanket that goes on the elephant's back. And you can you know, go to town with whatever you want to do, have fun with it. Okay, so we're almost done with this. Okay, 
let's go back and see that, what else we need to do. All right. So, so in a traditional painting, wherever there's gold, there would be beads. But because this is so tiny and you're really not going to be able to stick anything on this tiny bits, I'm going to put in these little dots, which kind of represent the beads that we would have put. Now, what I really want you to see here is the, the angle of the brush. Anytime I'm making a stroke which is flat, it's gonna be a very large stroke. If I wanna put just like a tiny dot, my, uh, you know, the brush is almost perpendicular to the uh, paper. And so then you kind of just, you know, like poke at it and you're gonna get these really nice dots. So hold it completely straight and just kind of poke at it and you get the really uh, perfect tiny dots. I think our elephant's starting to look good already. Okay, so we've still got to put some white on the cuff and the nails. Let's do that. And that'll give us a couple of minutes for the gold to dry a little bit more. And then we'll start putting the beads on it. Um, and what was that type of paper that you're using that you mix your paints on? This is palette paper. Um, you know, I actually have it here. Let me show you. Not a product plug, but well, sort of. So palette paper pad, and it comes with these sheets. Um, you just kind of tear away, and it's got a coating of wax on one side. So whatever you do, all you know, this uh, stays there. So you know, this is the the, the waxy side. And I can easily just mix and uh, then, you know, make a ball of it and throw it away. So I don't have to do any cleaning. And there, it lasts, again, it's about 40 sheets, costs about 10 bucks, but it's so much easier than having to clean a palette. And I admit it was a little lazy of me, but, you know, if you're painting a lot, then you, you just want to be able to do that. Color though is the ones that are gray because in a gray scale the colors show better. So uh, especially for hey, hi Shika, we're having a little bit of trouble with your audio. Is it plugged into the computer there? Yes, I can't touch anything. Can you hear me now? It's still very faint. So I'm gonna be louder. Is this okay? Um, still very faint. I'm wondering if maybe if you want to pull out that microphone and we could just use the computer audio if that would help. Okay. Is this better? Oh, that's great. Yes. Oh, all right. Okay. Sorry for the technical glitch here. All right. So uh, I don't know if you heard about the palette paper. Do you want me to repeat that? No, we did. We got the palette paper. It was just right after that when you started coloring okay. in those tusks. Okay. All right. So uh, we go in. Uh, we got the white, and I'm just going to do the tusk and the nails. I just kind of brighten it up a little bit because I have this off-white um, paper. Okay, so that's all the painting that we're gonna do on this.
we now is the really fun bit where we get to start putting the beat. So let me show you what I have here. Okay. Uh, let's put this a bit so you can actually see all the stuff I have going on. Now these are they're flat backed. That means they're not completely round. They're like a sphere which has been kind of sliced. And the reason it's this way is because it will stick better to paper. You know, round things would eventually kind of just fall off. I have them in different, you know, shape, in different sizes and different colors. Uh, we'll pick a few that, maybe pick the red and the green ones and then start putting them in. We've got put a few here. Now, what we stick this with is the next question. Now, what I have is matte medium, which is really, um, which is what we use to thin out paint. It's really an expensive form of glue. It works, you know, you do need to use it when you're painting, but since I have this and it's a really nice adhesive, that's what I use. If you don't have it at home, just regular glue is fine as well. Maybe a few bigger ones as well, just so that you can see better. Okay, so you take the bead and you're gonna paint the back. These ones have a little bit of gold coloring on back on the back, which make it a little bit easier um, to see. Okay, and then you just place it down. And if the medium peeks through, it does not matter because it's gonna dry clear. And that's the nice thing about the, you know, the more expensive adhesive is that it's gonna not be messy. It won't become black. It will just simply dry clear. With Elmer's, you know, it sometimes gets messy. Okay. Even with the Elmer's glue, would you recommend painting the glue on to the back of the beads? Um, yes, I would. Just because you don't want to get too much onto it. It's just, uh, just a little bit more control. You know, normally, uh, especially when younger kids put beads on, sometimes they just glue, you know, paint glue all over that or pour glue all over and then just kind of drop the beads. That's not the best idea because that also means that you've covered your nice gold paint with a layer of glue. We don't want that. We only want glue where the bead is touching the paint. So, you know, that's why I'm putting it just a little bit on this and it's fairly strong. So you don't need to put too much. I'm also adjusting before it dries. Again, you can use any size, any type you want. You, uh, you know, if you go into Michael's, there's a whole aisle of interesting beads, and you really can have fun with what you want to do here. Okay, so I have a little bit of blue um, coming out, but that's okay because it's really, once it dries, it's just going to be fine. So last one, one behind the ear, and maybe one more right up there. Okay, so this has to stay still for a bit. Keep it flat. If you pick it up, it's going to just slide right off. So I'm going to keep this flat here. I'm going to show you some of the other things we have while we wait for this to dry. I'll give it a minute before you know I touch it. So this is the other one, and here, of course, I've used much smaller ones. Although I think you know, big looks nice. It just it has more impact. But you can try different things. Then if we have a look at this one. We've got 
you have a nice red ones here and I have some white ones, which really do look like jewels. Uh, it's a nice color to have. The red and the green are, you know, more earthy, but the white really looks sparkly. And if sparkles is the way you want to go, then, you know, you have, um, you absolutely have your kind of bead. Okay, let's see. The last thing I really want to show you is this gold line. And this is, again, if you do not want to do the gold and you want to kind of make it a little bit easier for yourself, then these gold pens are pretty cool. Um, I think this is from Craftsmart. And this is just a regular Sharpie. Sharpie, it's duller, it's not that metallic. Uh, I really like Craftsmart, but that's just me. You know, everybody has different um, preferences. And I'm gonna show you, we're gonna make this line or this border around it. And I'll kind of give you an idea of how this works. You do have, Shake it a bit to get it to start moving. Again, it's fairly wet, so I'm going to try and not smudge it. You have to press them really hard, otherwise they don't uh, give you that even line. Okay, so that's that. I'm gonna try and pick it up. Hopefully they won't slide off. Fold. have our greeting card and this is where you can write your lovely note and you know whoever gets this is really gonna be surprised because it's such a nice well thought out and very very creative and different greeting card that you can give for the holidays anyways i hope you really uh, you know you enjoyed uh, this process and i really hope that you guys will try it out um and um, thank you for joining me. Bye. So we'll, we'll stick around for a couple more questions if you have any. Uh, you got a comment to say thank you. Easy version of a beautiful art firm form, which we can make. Great. Awesome. Um, for your tracing of the elephant earlier, could you just show those pieces one more time? of your, the image in sure. your paper that you used? Sure, sure, sure. So we... Okay. So the cardstock and then the carbon paper, which is really you know, the black stuff on the back. And uh, this is the tracing that I have. And, um, you can have any kind of uh, picture, you know, you just take it from a magazine and cut it out. And then that way you can just, uh, you know, trace whatever you want. So I've placed it and I have aligned them just so that it stays, it stays in place and I'm putting it where I need it to be. So once I've aligned everything, I'll paper clip it. Um, again, the, you've got the tracing, you've got the tracing paper or the picture, and I'm calling it the tracing because it's on tracing paper, but it's whatever picture you want. This is the carbon paper and then whatever paper you want the image on is right at the bottom. And the moment I press down on it, the, it transfers. So suppose I was supposed to write Plano on this it's going to show plano at the other end. So I can, uh, you know, whatever it is that I want, I can transfer. 
And you can transfer this on a canvas as well. Uh, you can transfer it on board, um, any size, because you can't always print out something really large. But this is a great way of transferring your uh, images onto, uh, you know, if you were, say, doing a vase or something like that, you transfer it in a vase, it'll work. Uh, well, a different kind. I guess you have to have it slightly darker, obviously, if it was glass, but it does work on a variety of materials. I hope Great. that. Thank you. And we provided you provided us a PDF of different elephant images for everyone to use to create right. their greeting cards. Yeah. So this was one of the templates I think that was on there. There's also, uh, you know, this, and we can, I guess, uh, Maggie, I don't know if we can have it sent out later if people want it. Yeah, the recording will be emailed out and okay. will be posted on our blog and probably our YouTube page as well. Okay, perfect. So, you know, all kinds of images. I have this one painted you know, right behind me. And what we did here is I painted uh, just this area. And here I use glitter glue. So wherever there's a line, I just, you, you know, you, I had my, uh, in some glitter glue lines. So we just, I just traced it out and then put beads right down the, wherever the peacock feather is. And so a faster, simpler way of doing it. And, um, you know, probably better for younger kids. You could have even just color penciled this area. Hey, thank you. And we can, how can we learn more about you, Shika? So I do, uh, you know, contact me. I have a, a website, uh, shikabajaj.com. I have another one, uh, crimsonpalette.net. It's a great way of getting uh, in touch with me. If you want to learn more about Tanjore, there's just a wealth of material out there, um, you know, on YouTube. And uh, uh, just if you go start and just Google it, so many things come up. So I hope this is just the start of your interest in you know, Tanjore paintings and that, you know, you learn a lot more uh, as time goes by. Yes, I'm sure we will. I want to thank everyone who has joined us today for Spotlight Art. Again, an email of this program will be sent out in the coming days. It might be just delayed because of the upcoming holiday. And keep an eye out on planolibrarylearns.org for more virtual programs. And I hope everybody has a happy holiday this week. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. This was fun. Thank you.